Thank you for joining. My name is Sophia. I'm a second year engineering science student and I'll be moderating the session today. I'm introducing Mr. Akia Shakiba, whose preferred pronouns are he, him, his. He is the CEO at Examify Inc. and a PhD student in the Edward S. Rogers Her Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Mr. Shakiba is a PhD research student focused in cloud cache optimization. He has a passion for teaching, and in 2019, he started the ed tech company Examify here at U of T. Examify works to improve the online examination experience for both students and teaching staff in STEM. Mr. Shakiba's presentation today is called Better Than, Pas Better Than Paper Exams. Today's session will be recorded and shared after the workshop. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so as was mentioned, my name is Kia Shakiba. <laughs> Um, I'm from Examify. It's a, it's a service that um, I've spent about a year and a half building uh, here at, at, at the University of Toronto. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about how we incorporated Examify into some of the courses here at U of T um, and ultimately resulted in their assessments becoming, based on our feedback, better than their, their original paper exams. So this talk is going to... Um, take the shape of a little bit like a case study, where we're going to take a look at these two courses that um, just ran this past uh, January term, uh, the winter term, um, namely APS 105 and MIE 253. Uh, APS 105 is a first year intro to C programming course. Uh, it has 550 students, four instructors, and 23 TAs. So the course is a very large course, and any modifications made to the course, be it the content or the um, the, the scheduling of the course or how, how the course is run um, is a logistic mess. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very difficult to coordinate with not only 550 students, and these are first-year students who are very new to not only programming but new to the entire university experience, um, but it's also very um, logistically difficult to coordinate with 30 members of a teaching staff, or close to 30 members of a teaching staff. And then um, we also have MIE 253. Um, which is a second year data modeling course with um, about 110 students. So it's still a fairly large course, but, but definitely a lot smaller. Um, one instructors and nine teaching assistants. And this course is a, uh, a SQL or SQL course. Now these two courses are um, primarily programming courses and that's that's the focus of the talk today. Um, but but definitely the tool is applicable to, to a variety of different um, types of, of exams uh, and assessments in general. And uh, throughout the talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of walk through um, the process of how, first of all, these courses were run in the past to what happened during the sudden transition um, from in-person to distance learning uh, to ultimately where we are today, where we've transitioned everything to a, a pretty stable and, um, and a well-received online environment. So first of all, let's, let's take a step back and, and think about the old normal um, back when we were allowed to we were able to, to go to campus and, um, and, and be in person and, and have in-person lectures and labs. Um, the way that these courses were run, where their pr primary marking components were labs and, uh, and midterm and, and final examinations. The labs were done in actual lab rooms on lab computers that already had all the pre-configured software. Everything was, was set up and ready to go for the students. Um, and they would all kind of come into the lab session at, at their uh, session time and TAs would monitor and help out and um, answer any questions and, and do some evaluations there. Their examinations, although they were computer programming courses, were all done pen and paper uh, in the standard examination format in an exam hall um, and then were marked uh, by hand by the teaching staff afterwards as well. And now let, let's, let's move forward a little bit to March uh, of 2020. Um, where we had this sudden shift, where, where, where uh, we had the lockdown and the sudden shift to, to distance learning, um, and, and all the problems that we faced. So I was a member of the teaching staff of one of these courses myself, um, and, and the, the logistics, I was a member of the larger one, the APS 105, the logistics of, of handling this shift to distance learning um, was extremely difficult. And um, some of the reasons were, well, first of all, there was really no standard solution um, for online assessments. Uh, there were tools like Quirkus um, or Crowdmark or, or things like that, but um, they often lacked the ability to run adequate online exams, especially for very technical courses. Um, Quirkus, I think, Quirkus allows you to do you know multiple choice, long answer questions, uh, things of that nature. But in 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 a, in a technical programming course, in an engineering course, 
um, that's often not enough for the students, right? So at the end of the day, it just turns into the students uploading images um, of their handwritten work, um, which, which is tedious and, and very cumbersome. And then students are required to use remote resources. So as I mentioned, their, their labs previously uh, were done in person uh, entirely. Um, and now we require the students to, from a distance, log into these lab computers from their home computers so that they can use the, the, the software on those computers, um, which trying to coordinate with, with a large course of first year students who are not only just learning programming, are now learning this whole tool set for how to connect to the school from a distance, um, became an extremely stressful and, and tedious process. And then furthermore, there was, of course, issues with plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is an issue um, regardless of whether or not you're doing distance learning, but especially uh, now that we don't really have access to the, the students um, in person, we can't really verify who's doing all these submissions. We have no way of knowing who was actually completing these assessments and uh, whether or not the students were working with each other um, or, or chatting during them uh, or things of that nature, or even copy pasting other students' submissions. Um, for a course of 550 students, it can be very difficult to, to weed that out. Um, so that was a, another very uh, difficult part of this whole process. And then furthermore, the entire marking process for the teaching staff became an absolute headache. Um, so for the very for the APS course, the very large one, um, we had students use Quercus um, as their their primary method. This is before we use Examify as their primary method of online examinations. Um, and their fallback was sending emails. If something went wrong, they would send us an email with the pictures of, of their handwritten work, and we had to sort through it. Now, for small courses, maybe that, that is manageable. But for a course of 550 students, um, during a two-hour exam, you know, I was getting upwards of you know, 50 to 100 emails that I had to sort through and figure out um, all during the exam of students having issues and trying to send their solutions and being very stressed that their, their exams weren't being submitted or some issue was, was going on. Um, so they were they were resorting to emails, which which became a mess as well. And then ultimately, the result of this um, in some courses in the department and at the university were many exams and labs uh, after the shift distance learning were just simply canceled. Uh, it became too much of a logistic mess um, to deal with it. So the, they were canceled and the, the marks weights shifted to, to previous assessments, which may not have been very fair. I mean, although it, it, there wasn't much of a choice for a lot of these courses, it may not have been the most fair thing for the students um, who had made decisions of time allocation decisions, scheduling decisions before of when they're going to spend what time on what uh, course based on what the weights of the, the assessments were. Um, to have all of their weights move to previous assessments uh, may, not, may not have been, uh, uh, may not have made all the students happy. Um, so let's take a little bit look uh, of, of a closer look um, at each of those points, so that th there is no standard solution. There's really no um, one-stop shop recipe for how to do online exams for every course. Um, and, and as a result, each instructor just kind of came up with their own method of running their online exams um, suited specifically for their course. Some courses required some specific softwares and programming languages. Some courses required um, other software, uh, which which uh, the, the each instructor kind of came up with on their own. And as a result, um, the students who may have been taking, you know, four to six, anywhere from four to six courses each term, uh, had to struggle, and it became a very stressful experience to just keep track of how they're supposed to do all the assessments for all their courses, because every course ends up being a completely different assessment. There's no one place they can go to for everything, um, and, and and it's up to the students who are not only under a lot of pressure um, to to perform these assessments, they're now under pressure to, to just keep track of how they're supposed to perform the assessments, and then. Uh, because of the how sudden the shift was to distance learning, um, many of the solutions that the instructors came up with were untested and unproven, um, meaning that uh, they, they, although worked in theory, maybe not at the scale of the course uh, of, of large courses, um, were able to handle the students doing their assessments um, from a distance. And then furthermore, the students were spread out all over the world. So we had logistics issues of just keeping track of, of time zones, um, and, and students' connectivity issues uh, who might not have had the best internet connections to be able to upload images of their, their handwritten assessments. Um, so we had to keep track of that as well. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the students were asked to install various softwares throughout the term to, keep, keep to, to handle these um, individual kind of schemes that these instructors came up with. Uh, and, and because of that, a large portion of the teaching time was simply 
wasted explaining how to use the tools versus the actual course content. And if you think about when this shift happened, it happened mid-March roughly, um, that's a really critical time in a lot of courses where the courses are just you know ramping up to to cover the bulk of their material about a month or so before final exams. Um, so, you know, taking time away from from each and every minute of lectures is uh, is a big deal. And then any time wasted spent teaching students just how to even connect to the school computers um, is time that they're not learning the actual course content. And as I mentioned, um, the students were, were remote now and, and, you know, all over the world. They had com computer uh, connection issues um, that we basically just spent the weeks after the the shift to distance learning, just trying to resolve all these issues uh, with their unstable internet and um, any any incompatible software. They had to install software on the computers issues. We had to resolve all of that, which in a course the size of APS 105 became a logistic uh, a mess. And then, like I mentioned, plagiarism became a, a big issue, right? The teaching staff didn't really know who was writing what submissions. And the students now, um, whereas in person uh, exams, handwritten exams, it's very difficult. They might come up with very clever schemes um, here and there, but it's very difficult to communicate with other students during the exam. Uh, and what ended up happening um, for these courses is some of the teaching assistants actually attempted to, to find instances of plagiarism uh, manually. And basically during the marking process, they kind of kept track of what things they saw from some students. And if they saw it again, they would write it down and try to parse through it that way. Uh, and although it worked here and there, they, we, we, we found a few students who um, had very clearly just copy pasted somebody else's work. Um, it, it was definitely not scalable, even with a teaching team of almost 30 people for a course of 550 people, definitely not scalable, um, even for having one TA do each question um, to try to try to may uh, keep track of 550 people's work. Um, so there was that issue. Uh, and then the marking process is extremely tedious. And now this is true uh, not only uh, because of the shift of distance learning, but in general, marking handwritten assessments is a really tedious process. And this is especially true in a coding course. Now, I've been involved in this course in the teaching team for many years now. Um, and I remember always when we were marking these handwritten midterms and finals, uh, for a course of 550 people, it would take a teaching team of almost 30 people roughly 10 hours straight um, to mark uh, all, at, all at once. Um, so it was a very long and, and arduous process. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm spending 90% of my time marking these assessments, just trying to read and understand the, the student's code. Um, whereas the whole humans aren't built for that. The computers we have are exactly designed to read and understand code and provide the output. So why aren't we better leveraging um, all these electronic platforms that we have uh, to make this marking process um, really easy? Now, a lot of courses um, did have auto markers set up in, in place, um, but they were very difficult to set up and maintain and often required one TA dedicated to their maintenance. Um, and as you can see, you know, they, they had um, auto marker manuals that just explained how to run the auto markers that could be many, many pages long um, and very difficult to go through for the TAs. And then uh, furthermore, if we just take a step back and think about what we're doing with exams, we're trying to best understand whether or not each student has a good understanding of the course material. Is the way that we're doing it right now, or handwritten exams specifically, really the best way to adequately measure their knowledge of whether or not they understood the course? Um, and are they able to adequately demonstrate their knowledge of the course material um, through these exams? And, and this is, um, a very common marking structure uh, for courses where they have a 30%, 35% uh, midterm and 40% final and 25% labs, um, where the major bulk, 75% of the students course mark comes from handwritten exams that don't really emulate the real world environment of let's say programming, where you know if a student's programming on a computer, they could be an excellent programmer um, when they are programming in a programming environment. So they have access to the computer, they can run their program, see the result, um, uh, go through this feedback loop of, of fixing the program, which is an important part of the programming process, which kind of gets gets knocked away in a handwritten exam. Um, and now the, the, the majority of their mark is coming from just being able to demonstrate their knowledge in this handwritten environment. And then the 25% um, coming from labs is where they really get to demonstrate some of their programming knowledge, but um, most of the time it's, it's not really a major part of the course uh, weight. Um, so we, we have to kind of evaluate whether or not this is really the best way to be doing um, examinations. So now uh, I'm going to talk a bit about what Examify is and what the tool uh, was planned to do and what, what it ultimately did for these courses. Um, so Examify, the whole principle of it was we wanted to come up with a standard platform for any assessment, 
right? Um, so the students wouldn't have to keep track of multiple professors' different uh, schemes of how they want to run their course. They can run any course, technical or non-technical, um, directly from one platform. And we wanted to ensure that it's an entirely in-browser uh, experience with no additional software required for the students to install. So we often don't know um, what platforms the students are running. They could have very um, outdated uh, computers. Um, they could have computers with operating systems that we don't necessarily support for all the software. Uh, and in a course of 550 people, it's, it's oftentimes we're going to get a, a decent um, number of people having these issues that we have to resolve. They have to ultimately be able to access the course content. Um, and whereas uh, previously, pre, pre uh, uh, distance learning, pre pandemic, um, they could come into the labs and just simply use the lab computers that had all that software installed. They're now required to figure out how to do this on their own computers. And we wanted to kind of take out that whole process and make it an entirely in browser experience. So you can even do an, a, a very complex coding exam directly from your phone if you really wanted to. Right? It doesn't really matter what, what platform you're using. Um, you can just very simply and easily access the course content, which is what you care about. And then uh, we wanted to incorporate an automated plagiarism detection system. So uh, there, we've come up with a very intelligent way of, of determining whether or not students have uh, coordinated with each other uh, to complete certain assessments. Um, and this is all done automatically for the instructor. So whereas uh, tools like this exist in the past, um, they're often very difficult to set up or um, they require you know, one person, one teaching assistant to go through and parse all the data and uh, evaluate the results. Uh, and do things like that. But now if, if it's all in one platform, simply when the instructor is going in or the teaching um, assistant is going in to mark the, the, the assessment, they can see if any any flags have come up uh, as to whether or not this is it's very similar or, or requires further attention. Um, and they can just focus on, on the ones that seem to be uh, similar to other student submissions. And then we wanted to give students access to a, a method of, of using cloud computing resources that are becoming really prevalent in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, to, to use on their exams, access this, this really simple access to cloud computing resources um, so that they don't need to use their computers at all anymore. Um, and, and, and basically they can run even very, very complex, uh, large um, compute heavy programs directly on the cloud. So their, their computers don't matter at all. Uh, and then we wanted to provide auto marking tools to aid in this entire marking process to, to more streamline um, this process and uh, allow uh, an exam that maybe took 10 hours previously to mark to be marked in a few minutes. Um, so first off, we wanted to give students access to a real coding environment to better evaluate their ability to code, right? If you want to learn someone's coding ability, you have to give them access to a coding environment. So on the Examify platform, we, during an exam, a student has access to a full code editor um, that they can use to write their code. They have autocomplete features um, that they can uh, kind, of, kind of code and run their code um, directly from the browser and, and go through this iterative process. Uh, for database courses, for so that MIE course, um, we actually give students access. So just a little bit of background to what a database is. It's basically a collection of rows of data, similar to an Excel sheet, um, uh, where you have sheets that correspond to tables, um, where students can write queries in this language called uh, SQL, or Structured Query Language, um, to access data that they want. Right. So. Whereas previously, this was you know, handwritten exams. They would write their queries by hand, and it was up to the teaching staff to figure out if the query accessed the data it was supposed to access. We actually allow instructors to define an, an entire database that the students can really interact with and access during an exam. And this allows us to, to make, the pro make the problems a lot more interesting, because we can make them more complex, more uh, indicative of what they would see in the real world, whereas with a handwritten exam, they were limited because you know we couldn't expect the students to really do these complex calculations in their head uh, and these complex queries in their head. Whereas now we can actually evaluate whether or not they really understood the course material. And as I mentioned, uh, we, we, we did want to give the students that real time feedback. It's a very important part of the programming process to, to have this feedback um, where you kind of write your program, run it, see the results. If there's any errors, you correct them. Um, and if there, uh, if there's any, modifications you need to make, you can do this through this iterative process. So we wanted to give students access to test cases that the student, that the, the instructor or the teaching staff could define that allow the students to make sure that their programs pass a certain baseline test. Uh, and it gives the students more confident, the confidence that you know the code that they're writing isn't just a complete shot in the dark, and it's at least on the right path. And then furthermore, this is actually very important for the teaching staff because 
previously when the students were doing all this work by hand, um, oftentimes some of the students would go down avenues. They could be very good programmers, but they would misunderstand the problem or go down avenues that were um, not correct from the beginning and ultimately end up with a result that's completely different and requires a decent amount of time marking to really understand what the student's doing. But now you kind of have this baseline to make sure that all the students at least are understanding the problem and they're on the right track. So in the marking process, it becomes a lot more uh, streamlined. And then, like I mentioned, we wanted to provide a really powerful auto marker. So as soon as an exam completes, the auto marker automatically picks it up and runs all, all the assessments through an auto marker that can be defined with, uh, that can be created with a few simple clicks by any member of the teaching staff. It doesn't require um, one TA with uh, a 23 page manual to, to figure out. Um, and then during the marking process, at a glance, you can see exactly what tests the student's code passed, how many marks were required, uh, how many required marks were allotted to that test, um, and what, which ones uh, they failed. And then through this process, um, you're able to really quickly give the student a mark, whereas a lot of the time you can just kind of read their code to make sure it, it makes sense, and then just look at the test cases to see if the code performs the, the, the things that it's supposed to do. And then a lot of the time, um, we do require some TAs sometimes to go in and manually uh, evaluate the code. Um, and an issue in large courses is we want to make sure that the teaching staff, maybe multiple TAs, let's say three TAs are evaluating one question. We want to make sure that they're all evaluating the question with the same um, idea of where the marks should be, of, of how um, we don't want to be have a, a large mark disparity between the TAs. Um, so one TA marks very easy, one TA marks very hard. Having this standard level of an auto marker that's presented to all the TAs during the marking process gives the TA an idea of roughly where this person's um, assessment should land in terms of marks that they can use in the marking process later on to make sure that their marks don't deviate too much um, from, from uh, the other TAs. And then as I mentioned, we have an automated plagiarism, plagiarism detection system um, that can really, at a fine grain level, evaluate student code uh, and determine whether or not they seem to have collaborated with other students. Um, so you can see here, these are, these are two pieces of code that, that look um, a little different. The students seem to have changed some of the names of, of things here and there, but ultimately perform the same thing. And it, it's, it's for this simple example, um, it's, it's less um, obvious, but for large code examples, um, it becomes very clear that the two students, although they, they've tried to make the code look different, have ultimately collaborated. Um, and we have a detection system that, that parses through all of that um, entirely automated and tells the, the TA whether or not they need to check the student's code for plagiarism and with what other students it seemed, they, it seemed that they have plagiarized. Um, so this whole plagiarism detection um, um, system allows the, the, the teaching assistants and the, the instructors to very quickly uh, identify any sources of plagiarism. And then furthermore, because we're running this, uh, this, these exams and these, these labs, these assessments, in an entirely online environment, we can really leverage um, the, the whole electronic process by providing the teaching um, staff with really fine-grained analytics as to, first of all, um, look, they can, of course, see how many people have submitted what question, but furthermore, they can get a really fine-grained analysis of how much time students were spending on certain questions on average versus others. And then through this, they can understand not only you know which questions were harder, which questions were easier for future exams, they can see which topics the students seemed to have on average more difficulty with. And they can use this to better the course in future iterations. If, if the students seem to have problems with a certain um, aspect of programming, they can spend more time in later versions of the course focusing on that to make sure the students understand it. And now ultimately, um, the feedback that we received from the students uh, was very good. So the instructors wanted to, a lot of the instructors wanted to, oh, there we go, wanted to, to determine whether or not they wanted to continue using Xamify in the future or this whole online learning experience um, was, a, was a good thing. Um, so they set up polls and they asked students um, if they liked using the, the tool. Um, and, you know, 97% of the students said that they, they prefer Xamify to what, whatever was happening previously in the course. Um, and we got a lot of really good um, comments from the students saying that they, they really enjoyed it and they thought it was a, a really good process. Um, and then furthermore, a lot of the students even went as far as asking whether or not we can use the tool uh, not just as an assessment platform, but as a learning resource, uh, which was something we, we actually ended up implementing. We implemented um, exams that were worth zero marks, where the students could go in throughout the course, long running exams, they were running for weeks, students could go in at their own leisure and just practice their programming 
um, in an environment that uh, was very simple to use. And although this is true that you can find this um, online uh, in other platforms, uh, the students really liked the fact that the teaching the teaching staff had set up this 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 practice exam or this learning uh, platform for them based on the course material specifically. So when they were doing it, they knew that they were practicing the right things to really understand um, the, the, the right things to really understand whether or not they were figuring out, uh, demonstrating their, their understanding of the course material. And a very interesting thing is early on uh, in, in one of the courses, um, the instructor provided the exam on Quercus and on Examify. And basically the duplicate exactly the same exam and told the students, it's up to you to, to, fig to pick which platform you want to use. Uh, do your exam there, we'll mark both uh, uh, the submissions from both platforms. And 96.3% of students just chose to do it on Examify because it was so it was much better suited uh, to, 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 for them to demonstrate their ability to, to uh, understand the course. So overall the feedback um, has been very good. So that uh, concludes my talk. I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Uh, if you need to, to take a look at what the website is, uh, you can see the link on the screen. And if you need to email us, please uh, please email the link on the screen as well. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll take them now. Thank you so much, Mr. Shakiva. Um, to anyone still here, you might want to follow Mr. Shakiva's Twitter, at Kia Shakiva. And just as a reminder that this is the last call to submit bingo cards, and I'll send a link in the chat. They're due before the start of next session.